Hi everyone, today I'm going to demonstrate how you can model continuous members in SkySiv Structural 3D. Uh, so if you didn't know already, uh, SkySiv Structural 3D is a cloud-based structural analysis and design software. Um, so I think the easiest way to demonstrate this is to uh, start with a structure that I, I built before. So I'm just opening this structure from my cloud storage. As you can see, this is just a, a very basic um, frame structure. Now, as you can see, this member is one member, and this member is one member. Now, what if I wanted to add uh, members across the top of this structure um, really quickly and really easily? So this is where continuous members um, comes in very handy. So what I'm, going, I'm going to do is I'm going to add some nodes along these members without splitting them. So I'll add a node at one, two, zero. So you can see I added node nine there. And two, two, zero, that added node 10 there. One, two, two, that added node 11 there. And two, two, two. So then that added node 12. So now I can just create members from uh, nine to 11 and then 10 to 12. Now, previously and in, in other structural analysis software, this would require you to have split up member five into three members. So you would have had to split up member five from five to nine, nine to 10, and then 10 to six. Likewise, member six, you would have had to split from seven to 11, 11 to 12, and then 12 to eight. But as you can see, we've, we've left this as one member. And the reason why this is okay is because we've previously I set the member to being type continuous and normal. So a continuous member means that it can go through multiple nodes and be connected to them. So if this member was just normal, it wouldn't be connected to 9 and 10. It would just be connected to its ends, 5 and 6. But because it's continuous and normal, it's connected to 5, 9, 10, and 6. And uh, we'll be able to see this if uh, we add some loads and solve it. So what I'm going to do is... Um, add some distributed loads just so we can get a solve happening. So I'm going to go 7 and 8. I'll just do, I'm just making this up, so I'll just do negative 0.5 kilonewtons. Yeah, and then I'll do 5 and 6. That's negative 1 kilonewtons. Alright, so we added some distributed loads. Now the benefit to this also is uh, when I went to add loads, I just had to add one load across the whole of member 5. I didn't have to um, add three distributed loads on uh, the three members that would have been split uh, if it wasn't a continuous member. So yeah, now we solve this. Okay, it's solved and we should see... Beautiful. So that's the deflection curve and we can see that clearly uh, node f uh, member 5, this member along here, was one continuous member and it's connected to those new members that I created across the top of the structure. Um, yeah, and that's your displacement shape, your moment diagrams, shear diagrams, and we just have a quick look in the 3D render just to see that everything was as we expected. Um, yeah, that all looks good. So um, that saved a lot of time because I didn't, like I said before, I didn't need to split up member five into into three different members. So just to recap, uh, to do this, all you have to do is create your members as continuous and normal and then it will automatically connect to any nodes that it passes through. So in the case of member 5 it, it connected automatically to node 9 and node 10. And if you, if you didn't want to connect to those to those um, mid-spanning nodes then you would just create it as a normal member. Alright so I hope that really helps. Uh, you know this is a feature that can really save time um, when modeling so I highly recommend that you use it and um, yeah, let us know what you think. Okay, bye.